Hi guys, welcome back to Calic Chase Paranormal Investigations. I hope you're good, hope you're well. Um, I hope you had a great week. Um, so, it's been a little while, it's taken me a little while to get around to <clears throat> editing and um, posting this, but um, hopefully I'll have it up this weekend. Um, so, um, yeah, we revisited an area uh, that we called the undisclosed location, and it's over in the black country somewhere. Not too far from Dudley. Um, I wasn't really knowing what we were going to expect, um, but I'm really kind of glad that uh, we made the effort. The weather was beautiful, albeit it got like really, really, really cold um, later on. Um, but we're just kind of glad to get clear skies. So a couple of really interesting things happened, and um, I didn't have any sort of preconception of what was going to go on. I like to kind of think of myself as quite objective. Um, I studied psychology and one of the things I was always taught was to um, look at all of the um, environmental factors that can affect um, affect the outcome or the observation. Um, but fortunately we have, uh, I had a couple of people with me who were very knowledgeable and, and old in the tooth when it comes to investigating and um, they also have their own sort of techno technology that can locate and um, and just to basically tell us what's going on in the sky at any given time so if we do see anything it's it's uh, a case of um, it, if it's a plane then they'll be able to say there's definitely should be a plane up there and if we see something and they say um, according to what you know the information I have there shouldn't be any aircraft in the sky then you know I'm pretty much going to take what they say as red um so yeah um it was a really really interesting um evening and i'm really glad that we got down there um we were going to be trying some ce5 which is cl a close encounter of a fifth kind we're going to try and communicate and um indeed we did a bit of um i think we used it's called a frank box but um you know i kind of thought that was like a spirit box but I kind of get confused with these like gizmos and gadgets as to what they actually do. I'm quite skeptical myself, I have to be honest. Um, when when you get an electronic going and people read a name into that, I'm always like a little skeptical that we're actually filling in the gaps. Um, it's a bit like um, aud auditory um, paradelia. Um, you know, we, we, we think we can hear uh, a word forming that means something to us. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I'm still on a fence about that, but it was an interesting experiment. We didn't actually get around to doing the meditation, I think, because there were so few of us, it was very difficult to um, form a a good, I don't know, um, it, it was difficult to actually make the moment happen where we were still and quiet and you know, meditating or, um, but I'm willing to give that a go, you know, next time, definitely willing to give that a go because we're not, um, we're not leaving this, we're going to come back. Um, so yeah, this is a video um, in two parts really because it's quite long and I don't want you to kind of get bored rigid. Um, I know I kind of rattle on a bit, so hopefully um, I do a bit rattling on the beginning of this video because I thought I'd take the opportunity with my um, shitty little mobile phone to actually make a a crappy live on live video. You know what they you know go. Um, I feel I always feel a bit awkward about doing that because um, basically my my skin is shit. Uh, I look like um, Boris Karloff in day in daylight. Um, I'm not really looking after myself as much as I should do. I guess I should be drinking more water. Um, maybe you know not eating so much crap i'm going to try and cut down because you know summer is well and truly here and i do actually want to walk around in um in a pair of shorts at some point but you know that that's beside the point um yeah so i'm still you know i'm really self-conscious about how i sound how i look um you know if you guys can look beyond that then maybe you'll see somebody who's trying to find the truth I guess so yeah you know what without further ado i'm going to um shoot to the video where um, I'm actually sort of rabbiting away and talking about whatever. 
Hi guys, welcome to Canet Chase Paranormal Investigations. Um, so I'm at to be an uh, undisclosed location of ours. Uh, I really feel kind of like awkward um, calling it an undisclosed location because, um, <laughs> but we're having to keep it kind of like um, under wraps at the moment. So it's still under quite a lot of investigation and um, the activity is getting uh, stranger and stranger with the most recent one we've that was found, we found a free toed footprint. Um, now we're kind of thinking that maybe there's, <sighs> we're kind of thinking that maybe somebody's keeping uh, ostriches or something. Um, it's the only possible explanation that is for this footprint, which was around about uh, that maybe a little bit bigger than a training shoe. Um, and it's definitely a free toed footprint um, that was found. Um, we've had more strange lights um, and we've had, um, yeah, apart from anything else, they had these weird orb things going on. So, yeah, I mean, the sun's just going down now. As you can probably see behind me, it's it's, it's actually a beautiful, a really, really, really nice night. So, um, yeah, it's it's, it's going to be it's going to be a great night tonight. I think I was actually expecting it to rain earlier on, so this is really nice. Um, we don't have any theories yet as to why there's so much activity in this area and and yet and again the reason why we want to keep this um fairly quiet is because um it could attract some large groups we're not too far away from um people's homesteads and stuff so um uh, it it's in a, isn't it, there isn't like an urban area that's close by and uh, I think, um, and it's a beautiful place. And it's also, it's a working farm as well. So behind me, I think we've got fields of very, uh, very uh, young, uh, I think it's wheat maybe, um, or barley or something. So at some point the farmer is going to be, that's going to be a crop. And um, again, so we don't want like millions of people coming on here and uh, ripping the place up and making fires and things like that which I know has happened in other places. Um, and also we're still kind of formulating theories about what what, and why. Um, and quite honestly, I think maybe there's, there's... I mean, my first thought when I saw the original pictures, which which kind of like looked like... Um, which was bright green and self-illuminating um, down one of the paths, and it was probably about eight, nine foot tall. Reminded me a bit of a Venus flytrap. I don't have a, a own those pictures, so I can't post them. And um, so obviously we're keeping a lot of this stuff under wraps because there are um, investigators who are um, working with um, with the um, chap I'm with and um, they are sort of analysing these. Um, and um, So, um, yeah, we don't really want to um, be sharing those just yet. I mean, obviously, if I <coughs> if I record anything, I will definitely um, um share it but i still won't share the location if you know what i mean <coughs> sorry i've just swallowed a flight you can tell summer's here um uh, when you start f swallowing flies and stuff i didn't bring any snack bars so um maybe that's a bit of protein for me um who knows but um yeah i can taste it in my throat nice uh so yeah um we don't actually have any um, solid theories about this place. It there have been a few earthquakes, not too far away, um, or earth tremors, and I've actually felt them where I live, which is probably about um, seven or eight kilometres away. Um, so yeah, that might be something to do with it. It might be something perfectly natural, uh, although it wouldn't explain the, the giant footprint. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to, uh, I mean, that is such a fantastic, just take a look at that sunset. Isn't that just the best thing ever? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I love this time of year because I love the sunset. I love a sunrise. And, uh, you know, I love being out on these outdoor locations as well. Um, there's not too many indoor locations you can get these days that are free. So if it, it's great to, um, to be outside doing this. Um, so I'm going to check in with you soon and hopefully I'll get the video out and 
um, when it gets dark and um, yeah maybe touch wood we'll be able to see something we're going to try this ce5 which is close encounters of a fifth kind so we're going to open our minds up and try and um, make some kind of like contact with the um, with you know intelligent um, entities out there so until next time uh, i'll speak to you soon just cycling to see you know intelligent um, entities out there so until next time uh, i'll speak to you soon just so just before this uh, video, little bit of video starts, um, this was our first look at um, something that was uh, streaking across the sky. I mean, it wasn't going immensely quickly, but it showed no signs of being an aircraft. And indeed, we did check um, with various apps as to what was traveling in the sky. And you'll hear one of my colleagues talk about the, um, the possibilities of this not being um, a, a terrestrial craft, perhaps. Cycling to see if we can tell what it is. I've got a geolocator on it. It's giving us our latitude and longitude on the local time. Sorry about the shaky cam, by the way. No, we've got nothing. Nothing overflowing at the moment. It's become stationary. We've got nothing overflowing at the moment. I mean, it's just shifting a bit. What about you, Mark? Is it just stationary? No, it's, it's still moving. Right. It's, it's the way it's the, the azimuth is to where we are. I'm just it's looking on the NORAD as well to see if NORAD's got anything up. We've got one. We've got a satellite that should be coming that way yeah across here in about 90 minutes that was weird that wasn't a plane was it no hang on i can tell you i'll have a look at what i've done i told you you have, you have gone barney yeah. don't kid yourself otherwise <laughs> yeah um, so i'm gonna go and Check those bushes with this meter now. I can actually walk across it without going through mud. It's gone now, is it? There's nothing above us whatsoever. So I'm just going to pause it there because um, this next uh, clip was the the previous time that we were there. Actually, the previous but one time that we were there, we were picking up some really odd uh, electromagnetic readings from a a, uh, a row of uh, bushes and um, we couldn't really understand what was going on we also used um, dowsing rods for it and being very skeptical myself uh, being that I feel that sometimes people subconsciously make movements with their hands um, I decided to have a go at these dowsing rods as well and if I had done it subconsciously then um, yeah that's maybe so but I was very conscious of a fact that I really wanted to keep them from uh, from moving in to each other uh, but they did so um, yeah it's def definitely something weird so this was our first opportunity because last time we were here at its location um, it was really really muddy and cold and we couldn't get anywhere near these bushes again so um, so I, I'm just taking off now with the camera to have a wee look at um, with uh, my tri-field meter to see what, um, you know, if I'm picking up anything. Um, and to be fair, what you have to also understand is that moving a tri-field meter around, it can be, can set it off and make it sound a bit sensitive. So I'm trying to get tri-field as uh, steady as I can as I'm moving it to, um, between these bushes. So I'm just checking the bushes for um Gail, helicopter inbound coming that way. What? Away at the All right, give us a shot.
Anything going? Uh, not yet. We have a helicopter inbound. Ah, uh, all right. Good We've got right, 20 bro. miles out of the bound. All right. We just have another load to us as well. So just to uh, just to add, actually, I had the uh, there's like a volume thing which you can turn up on the tri field, and um, so I turned it up because I was aware that I wasn't getting a good picture of the actual needle on the tri field. So whenever it detects like electromagnetism, uh, the needle will kind of like flicker a bit, and it was all pretty low level stuff, but. Um, I used the volume as another indicator as to any anything that was um, that, it, that was making the needle move. So, uh, and I, like I said, I was very careful to keep it as uh, steady as I could. So this is probably really boring to some people. Um, thinking watching this video because I want to see some ghosts or an alien and um, yeah, bushes. Bushes is what I present.
So it's just interesting now so I've just popped my meter, my trifield meter back in my pocket. Um, there's a very um, low um, electromagnetic um, readings off um, the bushes uh, along this path and um, yeah so it's really interesting because as far as we know there's no electrical um, cables underneath here and we're just getting this very very low um, EMF reading from these bushes I'm quite far away from the group now so I yeah I mean I've got I've got the I've got walkie talkie with me so I can uh, keep in touch with them bats flying around here as well I mean I don't actually mind bats but obviously um, you know when you're trying to keep your eye on um, other stuff it's um, yeah bats are the, the kind of last thing you really want like blasting around your head as such still an amazing evening it's really really clear and we a few minutes ago we had a we've had two two really weird lights we've just checked with the you know that there's no satellites above us we've also just checked that there's no um, aircraft we've got um, apparently an incoming helicopter so kind of like the direction that I'm facing um, there's an incoming helicopter um, about 20 mile away and but apart from that we've had no aircraft we were very close to a, a, an airfield um, I think it's an RAF one so it wouldn't it's not surprising if we do see helicopters or stuff like that but at the same time um, I just thought I'd heard something. I'm not really expecting to see anything. This is just a path. Um, it does have some history, and the it's very ancient around here. It's very old. Um, there's a lot of history connected to this area of the Black Country. Um, more fields with um, the wheat, I think. So yeah, so we've had two really, really interesting lights go over. The one was extremely... Bloody hell, what's that? Oh, that, that is a plane, I think. I'm not sure if this is picking it up, but... So I've actually just realised that I said that uh, we weren't picking up any air traffic and it was a helicopter during uh, about 20 miles away. Um, I mean... I think it'd been a few minutes, so I'm not sure how fast that helicopter would have got there. I'm guessing it could have easily got there within that time. So that might have been the traffic I was seeing. Anyway, um...
So let me just pause it there. This next video coming up is another light that we saw. And uh, again, we didn't have any identifiers of any other aircraft in the airspace um, for the period of time that this light uh, went across the sky. I took this with my um, night scope, which is very, very difficult to it's very difficult to use following moving objects. Um, I generally I will use it to debunk um, if I think I see movement from a distance away. Um, it's good to actually debunk those um, those instances because you can, you can pick up clearly things like deer, rabbits, um, or even people moving off in in the distance. Um, but yeah, it's not so easy if you're following a rapidly moving object but um, so I hope you forgive it forgive me for shaky cam I would like better equipment to do these uh, night watches night sky watches um, but um, you have to use what you've got I guess so this is it um, you could probably see the the stars in the background so I'm a little bit shaky for a bit I'm trying to hold it as um, there's no actual lights flickering on this where I would expect with an aircraft it was just a very bright light that was moving um, up in the sky and um, it wasn't in outer space I don't think and uh, you can see the stars that it's going past um, in the um, in the background yeah, it was only a short video, so, um, but we thought that was one of the most interesting things of the evening. None of us could identify what this light was. None of the apps that we had, um, none of the apps that we had could identify what this light was either. Um, and uh, so that there, it, there it is. It's, um, so I guess this is as close to a UAP as we could um, possibly um, identify as um, label it as um, but very yeah, very interesting evening there is a part two to come to this and uh, i'll get to that um, hopefully i'll get that uploaded tomorrow i'm going to try and upload this one today and um, being saturday yeah very very interesting i i would have liked to have gone to the woods that that night but um, I think it's kind of safer when you're with somebody else, and um, because my because it was it went so cold. To be fair, that my my knee was really hurting, so I didn't really want to climb up the steep bank of a disused railway line to access the woods that were hundred or so meters just down that line. But um, definitely next time you go there, we'll go there, and whether that's on my own or with somebody else. Um, you know remains to be seen but i was really impressed by the light in the sky the one right at the end i think it's um i think it's a really valid um find that that one is so i hope you enjoyed this video and we will be returning to this area hopefully one day i'll be able to actually identify this area as um being um the area of interest rather than the undisclosed area of interest um but obviously like I said in the um, beginning video, on the evening, we have to be respectful of um, folk that live around there. And also, this is a working farm to a certain degree. And so there, is, there are fields of, um, of crops that um, a farmer will be at some point uh, reaping. And, and yeah, you know, there are some people who uh, will, you know, set fires and stuff and... Uh, it's kind of really disappointing you could you know blow the whole thing um, ruin the whole crop and uh, cause a lot of devastation and, and not only that it's very close to um, people's homes so um yeah um really looking forward to going through the next video it's actually something weird happened happened and i'm unsure what, because i haven't seen any of the footage um i will watch it the same time as what you will watch it so I'll be watching it for the first time and there was something that unusual happened with when we were doing some what they call like a frank box 
Uh, we stopped short of doing the CE5 I mentioned, um, but there was a Frank box or uh, a Spirit box. I'm not really kind of sure entirely what the specific name is for this item. Um, but whilst using that, we did have something else that was going on, which may, I'm hoping it comes up in a video. Um, so yeah, so till next time, you know, like take care of yourselves. Um, and uh, really hopefully for this, for the month of June, I probably won't be doing very much. I will hopefully be doing a few videos of places where I've had some childhood experiences of things I've seen um, and so I'll kind of like just do an on location video and show you exactly the area of um, the places I've seen these things and maybe try and tie it in with some sort of historical evidence of it, of those times. Um, they've been quite cryptic here because I'm, might not, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to frame it all and present it so um, but yeah, that those times in the late seventies were quite interesting, early eighties, and um, subsequently we found out that a lot of a lot of stuff was going on in the early eighties, late seventies, um, with um, UFO sightings and things like that. So um, yeah, till next time, take care of yourselves. I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, you know, please subscribe because um, the more people subscribe, the more it will give me a kick up the arse to make more regular videos and stuff. And uh, I do enjoy my paranormal investigating. I do, I would like to be more objective in my scientific um, approach to what I'm doing. So maybe, you know, relate it back to stuff I, I know that I've kind of studied um, during my years doing psychology and um, to give it a bit more, more of a um, dimension than, uh, than it already has. So, yep, till next time, take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Have a great week.